Hello, my name is Laurel Victoria Gray, and I am the founder and artistic director of Silk Road Dance Company. I also teach global dance history at George Washington University. I am a white woman with naturally curly red hair. I'm wearing a blue jacket and I'm sitting in front of a sky blue wall decorated with a ceramic plate from Uzbekistan. I'm speaking to you from Piscataway land in a town that is currently known as Tacoma Park. But the word Tacoma comes from an indigenous Salish word of the people of the Pacific Northwest. And it is the original name of Mount Rainier, the, that big mountain in Washington state. There's currently an effort to return to the original name of Tacoma and I support this effort. My presentation today is on communities dancing along the Silk Road in Maryland. So I'm going to share my screen and share some wonderful slides with you and eventually a video. So communities dancing along the Silk Road. The romanticized term Silk Road conjures up images of camel caravans crossing vast expanses of desert, but this dynamic trans-Eurasian trade conduit did more than just connect Europe and China and all those places in between. True, silk was a sought after luxury item, but more than silk and other prized goods traveled that network of trade routes. Ideas, languages, art, technology moved back and forth along these caravan trails, as well as people with their own spiritual traditions, languages, customs, cuisine, and importantly for us today, dance. Many of these transplanted Silk Road traditions have taken place in Maryland now because they have roots here. This session will introduce the history and significance of some dances of Silk Road cultures of origin that have diaspora communities in Maryland, specifically Turkic dances like Uzbek, Uyghur, and Azeri, and Persianate dances, Iranian and Tajik. These are all primarily Islamic cultures, although Maryland does have a Zoroastrian community, which has, of course, Persian roots. After my introductory comments, I will share a video with dance examples of Persian, Tajik, Uyghur, Uzbek, and Azeri dances performed by Silk Road Dance Company and ensemble members who have uh, studied these dances or are actually from these different cultures. So the goals today are to create a greater awareness of the diverse cultures found along the Silk Road and increase familiarity with Maryland's diaspora communities, provide a better understanding of the dance styles from Islamic cultures, and then finally, you know, deepen an appreciation for the aesthetics of Silk Road cultures. Here's how you can achieve these goals by keeping the following questions in mind as you watch this presentation and the video that follows it. First of all, think of the images and ideas that come in mind when you hear about dance from Central Asia. You might not be sure where that is exactly. Or what about Islamic communities? Do you have a stereotype? Or maybe you can't think of any dances at all. So this will help you. You'll get have some solid examples. Can you identify any of the major cultures or ethnic groups linked to the Silk Road? And what are the Silk Road diaspora communities that we have here in Maryland? How would you characterize their dances? Are there major differences between female and male dances? Today, I'll be sharing five dances with you, but in order to bring the idea of the Silk Road to life, each dance is linked with a treasure, historically associated with different places and ethnicities that were important trade centers on the Silk Road for over a thousand years. We're so fortunate that these ancient dance traditions are now in Maryland. They've taken root here, enriching our culture and uh, keeping alive very old traditions. 
The Zoroastrians, though, are the rarest of the diaspora communities in this presentation. Uh, Zoroastrianism has an unbroken connection, a uh, spiritual dishes, tradition that's about 3,500 years old, so very old, certainly older than Christianity. And it goes back to revelations by the prophet Zarathustra, also known as Zoroaster. The central concept is that there is a constant struggle between the forces of good and evil, and humans should actively seek to do good in order to overcome evil. So you're not just a passive observer of this struggle, but you have to be an active participant in it. This is expressed in the dictum, good thoughts, good words, good deeds. For Zoroastrians, fire is considered a sacred and purifying element. Zoroastrianism was the state religion of early Iranian empires, but about seventh century of the common era, the Arab invasion brought Islam to the region. And so rather than convert or face religious persecution, many people fled the territory, their homeland, and sought refuge in other lands, including India, where they became known as Parsis. The ancient holiday of the Zoroastrians are celebrated at the different positions of the earth. So here's just to remind you of where in the world we are, all right? So you get, get some bearings with some modern day countries. And there's some of the ancient Silk Roots. These countries, you'll be hearing more about these cities. We'll, we'll be visiting a few of them. So here's uh, some scenes from uh, Persepolis, which was the ancient capital of Persian Empire. The, this fantastic building, one of the largest in the world, certainly at the time, was destroyed by the troops of Alexander the Great. But it's believed that this procession shows people celebrating no ruse, bringing gifts to the, the king. More of them, a lot of them. It was a big holiday. What can I say? This symbol here um, is found in tile work um, as far away as Kiva in Uzbekistan, and it's a Zoroastrian symbol. So the, the holidays are connected with nature's holidays, not anybody's birth or death or a military victory. It has to do with the our planet Earth and the sun. So spring equinox is the beginning of the planting season. That's no ruse. It's also called Nevruz, no ruse. It depends which, which culture, but it all means the same thing as new day. So it has Zoroastrian roots and predates Islam, but it's observed by all the communities that you're going to see today, all of the dances that you see. And prior to the beginning of the new year, some of these cultures had a ritual where you would jump over a bonfire. And this was a way to purify yourself and rid yourself of the sins and evils of the previous year and get, start the new year with a clean slate. The new year now, no ruse, is also celebrated widely now, not just in Maryland, but throughout the US. And here's Silk Road Dance Company performing at the very first no ruse celebration at the White House. So that was really a, a moment to include this ancient holiday in American culture. It, Nurus has been called the commemoration of a great reminiscence, that of man's kinship with nature. This deeply rooted need to connect with nature and with each other exists in many of these Silk Road cultures. And there's a critical component to all these celebrations, and that is everybody dances. So you may have amateur groups, you may have children, you may have professional groups but all ages can join the communal dance expression of joy. And they can jump over bonfires before the holiday begins. At present, there are only about 110 to 120,000 members of the Zoroastrian community worldwide. So that's not very many people, which makes it even more exceptional that we here in Maryland have a Zoroastrian community. They opened their 
beautiful new Zoroastrian fire temple in Boyd's, Maryland in 2014. And here they perform their ancient rituals as well as celebrate different holidays like Nowruz um, and you know, other holidays and, and dances that are common to the widespread Iranian community. It's a beautiful, beautiful building. And inside it's very, very clean and white with lovely chandeliers. You get a, a, a real sense of enlightenment. Lois Ibsen al Faruqi, the wonderful scholar, identified four major categories of dance that have consistent significance for Muslim people. So we know that the Zoroastrians aren't Muslim, but they share some commonalities with these other cultures. And to my mind, all the dances that she's identified actually have pre-Islamic roots. So they're very, very ancient in human history. There are combat dances. We won't really see any of those, but we will see a male dance that has sort of this martial spirit to it. Solo improvisational dances, that's pretty common. And a chain dance or a line dance, a circle dance and um, not showing any religious or mystical dances today. Before going to the video presentation, I wanna give you an explanation of what you're going to see so you can better understand the history of the Silk Road. And we connected these dances with specific treasures associated with different cities and towns on the Silk Road. So that's to help you make a connection and help you get a sense of where on earth am I when I travel on the Silk Road. And there's also a map and text preceding each dance. Maryland's Iranian American community is well established with professional organizations, student groups at Maryland's colleges and universities, along with many restaurants and the Yekta Persian grocery store in Rockville, Maryland. The first piece that you'll see is a Persian dance that evolved from the solo improvisational style. And it's evocative of the city of Kashan, which is famous for roses and special perfume made from rose petals. The solo dancer is Sepida Arshadi, who also made her costume. And here's a moment, this was very recent when Silk Road Dance Company was able to perform at Montpellier Mansion. No audience, but they, they video uh, taped the performance and you can see that online at their website. It was absolutely beautiful spring day. We're really appreciative of that opportunity. Next community that we're gonna highlight will be the Tajik community, again, with historic and linguistic links to the Iranian community. Um, the Tajik dance is called tulips. Uh, it's a reminder that Tajiks are wild and native to Tajikistan. So in the springtime, they carpet the green mountain slopes. And these, the bulbs of these flowers were collected and traded along the Silk Road. So they literally took root in gardens throughout the East and beyond. The solar dancer for Tulips is Lale, and she's performing a choreogra choreography by me, inspired by a visit to Samarkand and working with Tajik dancers there. Music is by Oleg Fesov, and the videography is by Deborah Annalise Pacelli. The Uzbek community is connected to the next dance. And again, their dance traditionally is performed by women um, in the women's quarters, not in front of strange men, but it was a solo improvisational form. And the dance that you'll see is from Bukhara, a place that's known for ornate gold thread embroidery known as Zardozi. Now, Bukhara was once ruled by an emir who gave these beautifully embellished robes of honor as a reward or to distinguish guests and diplomats. The soloist is Nilafar Rahmanova, who is a native of Bukhara. And you'll see in the video that she's wearing a traditional velvet dress embellished with the Zardozi gold thread embroidery. The choreography is by People's Artist of Uzbekistan, Kadir Muminov, and set to traditional music. And here's Silk Road Dance Company in Tacoma Park performing 
the Uzbek dance Pilla about the silkworm and making the silk thread and embroidering with the silk, um, which is very, uh, probably one of the very first dances performed in public by Uzbek women. Because as I said, until the Bolshevik revolution, they didn't perform in public. Here's another Uzbek dance performed in Tacoma, marked by Silk Road Dance Company, wearing um, antique Bukharan dresses. The women are playing saucers and tapping them with fingers with, with thimbles. So you can see how this could start out. You're doing your hand sewing, you reach, you reach for your teacup or whatever, and your thimble touches the, the porcelain, and you realize that you have your own percussion right there. This dance is Namangan Almasi, also traditional Uzbek dance. This is performed at Joe's Movement Emporium in uh, Mount Rainier, Maryland. So now we go to the Uyghur community. And for many diaspora communities, you know, one of the first things that gets created is a restaurant that serves native dishes. And it also becomes an informal cultural center. So Maryland is no exception to this. And until quite recently, um, we had a Uyghur restaurant in Hyattsville. Unfortunately, like many other restaurants, it did not survive the economic devastation of the COVID quarantine. But before it closed, there were several cultural events there. So here's the exterior of the, the restaurant um, and Silk Road Dance Company performing there. Um, for the soft open of the restaurant. And there were other events too, but it, you know, it's, we're sad to have lost that uh, cultural gathering place. Another performance by of a Uyghur dance by Silk Road Dance Company in Tacoma Park, Maryland. And this is the soloist that you'll see in the video, uh, Irfan Otkur, who is actually uh, from uh, he is ethnic Uyghur. So his dance shows the men's styling and it has more of a martial spirit. On our map, we've connected this dance with this city of Kashgar, which was famed for spices. And uh, the Uyghur men were well known as warriors uh, with legendary skills in horsemanship and archery. So you'll you'll see some the kind of this kind of feeling there. The song um, is by Korgil Kaldimru and the choreography by Irfan himself, videography by James Stinson. Here's another dance from the Dolan town of Dolan on uh, that uh, on the Silk Road. Uh, this one shows Uyghurs Again, a really vigorous, exciting dance and has elements of hunting and it goes back to the days of hunting. Now we transition to the Azerbaijani community. So here are members of Maryland's Azerbaijani community celebrating uh, Navruz as they call the new year and dancing around a fire. Remember that connection with Zoroastrianism that is still alive with this idea of fire being sacred and being a way to purify. So the people are holding hands and doing a dance called Yali. And um, you, know, you can see everyone's in a good mood. It may be chilly out, but everybody's dancing and feeling good. The very last dance is uh, Azerbaijani. It has two elements. It has the solo improvisational feeling of the um, piece within the dance performed by Laura Carey, but also a line dance or a chain dance or a circle dance. You'll see that happen. So the beginning is kind of sad. We've we've linked it on our Silk Road map to the most important treasure of all, and that is love. So it's connected to the Azerbaijani town of Ganja, which is the birthplace of the famous poet Nizami Ganjavi, who wrote the 12th century epic romance known as Yedi Gozal or Haf Pekar or Seven Beauties. The music is a beloved melody, Sari Gelin, which means the golden bride. And it tells of an unhappy love, but the second part is the other side of love, the happy part. And it's an energetic dance expressing the shared joy of communal celebration. 
the dance is performed by Silk Road Dance Company and choreography and costume design is something that I did, Laurel Victoria Gray. So we do hope that you enjoy these dances. We really look forward to having live performances soon. You can learn more about Silk Road Dance Company at www.silkroaddance.com. So all one word, no, no dashes, no underscores, silkroaddance.com. And now I'm going to switch my 